siempre han pasado su trabajo y por y si no, si usted la quiso de perder, a ti se enfada, si quiso de perder, se enfada, si es el campeador, es más por día a la vez. Si es el solicitador, o la que se enfada, o si es el campeador. Si es mi espada, o no se enfada, si es el campeador, si es el campeador, me trae la presa y me enfada, si es el campeador, de esa forma, en la mayor de la vida. Your, 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 
you're free to go back and do it again. It's acceptable, yeah, right? It's really acceptable. So this young man here is uh, has a nickname uh, that he was given by his uh, brothers, a dreamer. And of, of course, he was a dreamer. And they were gathering sheaves. And uh, from nowhere, the sheaves of his, uh, his sheep first stood upright, mm. and uh, the rest, of the, the, the siblings' sheaves stood and bowed towards his. And when he shared this dream to his siblings, uh, of course, being a, a, a small boy down there uh, with, uh, among the siblings, you know, and uh, this dream was like. Uh, you know, and then the, the other brothers were like, you, young boys, uh, is joking, right? And uh, King Jesus, King Jesus, Joseph comes up with another dream, and uh, this time now he's dreaming about, uh, about uh, the sun, this, the, the sun, the moon, and the stars, 11 stars, to be very specific. We have a lot of stars here. Uh, it's very unfortunate that in the room we don't have stars, but back home, to our home, there's so many stars in there, in the in the sky. So he sees uh, the sun, the moon, and eleven stars specifically bowing before him. And when he shares this, he says, "I know Kabisa," and these people they hate him, they hate him the more. They even close to kill him. You know, you know the story. I don't want to go into details. Um. One day he sent the father sends him to go to the field and see where uh, the brothers were taking care of the, the, the flock. And uh, the, the siblings, when they see him, they are like, that dreamer. That dreamer is coming, and today we have to do something. You know, Anapino son and Adad, look at the old, the, the, the rope that, the, the, the beauty trees, the rigidly ornament that dad has made for him, you know. Anapino son and how many of the siblings were chosen to tell the one about So, uh, you know the story, uh, these people, they wanted to kill him, but um, it didn't happen. He was thrown into, uh, into uh, a system, and then uh, there was this Ishmaelite miners who were going to Egypt uh, for some business, and uh, they thought they were going to do it him. Let him, let us serve him. If we serve him, at least we get some points, right? Yeah, and they did uh, end up doing it. They went, brought him out of the system and sold him. You know, the dream that, uh, that uh, um, uh, Joseph had, eh? uh, that's what I'm telling you, like, if, you, if your dream hasn't come through, you're, you, you, you're, you're free to go back and dream again. Because that dream is supposed to change your life supposed to change your family's life. It's supposed to change the family, uh, your family back home, and even the, the nation or the place where God will place you. Those are the kind of dreams that you're supposed to, to dream. A dream that will change your life, a dream that will change your family's life, and a dream that will change the nation where God has placed you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So Joseph is told that here in is uh, uh, now a slave in Potiphar's house. You know what happens in Potiphar's house? Uh, he's subjected to some temptations, and uh, uh, he's been a man that. Uh, 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 what was our biggest? Him being a man that uh, feared God and followed God as the way he was taught by his father. And uh, uh, one thing about Joseph, when he was at home, I know he had a backup. He had a backup from a dad that loved him so much, right? And now that he was in Egypt, in Egypt he was all alone, not even a family, not, not, he knew nobody, and he was a slave, not a, he was a slave, not at home. Eh? And at, at this time, Joseph now 
He carries upon God like a hundred and one times because he knows he has no other person to look up to other than who? Other than who? Other than God. So uh, Jesus, um, in his fear for God and his faithfulness to, uh, to walk with God, he's tempted by Potiphar's, uh, Potiphar's uh, wife and he's like, how can I see? How can I do such a wicked thing? Before such a wicked thing and sin before God, you know, and uh, in resisting to this temptation, it caused him to go to prison, right? Prison for how many years? For more than two years, two years and something, right? Right? Yeah, um, I don't want to talk more about that story, you know it. Our key verse is coming from the book of. Uh, uh, Ephesians, sorry, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 uh, and 15. Somebody who is there to read for us. Yes. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you he may blameless and harmless the sons of God without you. In the midst of a cruel and perverse nation, mm -hmm. among whom he shines as light one. Amen. Do everything uh, without complaining or without murmuring, um, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault, in crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe. In the universe. Uh, you see, you see, um, Joseph. Uh, I've just uh, just dashed it through the, the story of Joseph. You know it well, but I just wanted to to just point on some uh, areas of interest. Eh? This young man here, God has put a dream in him, eh? and God has a, a big vision or a, a great task ahead of this man, and. Through that uh, a great task that God has put in this man, he has to go through some preparation for him to, to be able to take the task that God has ahead of him. I don't know if you people here, I don't know if you, you've uh, gone through that kind of, uh, but I know, I know, most of us we have gone through it enough. We may call, call it enough, depending on how you see it. We have gone through one or two, three challenges that in our human um, understanding and in our human nature, to the we are Maria to be like, why is God allowing such kind of things to happen to us? Do we find ourselves in such a situation that you feel like, God, you know, you could have done something, God, you know, you could have, you could have helped this, you know, you shouldn't allow such things to happen to you, you know, I've been this faithful servant for you, I've worked for you, I've done everything, you know, but if I, if I check on my, uh, on myself, but why are you allowing such kind of things to happen to me? I don't know if you find yourself in such a situation. Um, um, uh, the Bible is like right here that let us do everything without complaining, that we may be pure and blameless and faultless in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Even, even as we are living in this crooked and a morally corrupted generation. It has not happened by chance. Eh? And I, I think my sister mentioned something in the morning that the challenges that we are having, the problems that we are having, they are God's servants. I think that's how she put it. Eh? These are God's servants. This, this, I, I think I mentioned something here. The challenges that we go through in this life, they are measuring uh, uh, God has allowed them to happen to us because they are meant to shape our character, to develop us, and to grow us in some way that we may be able and we may be ready for a bigger task that is ahead of us. I don't know if I'll be wrong if I say that if you're not facing big and bigger challenges in this life, then uh, you should question your God. If you're not facing big and bigger or many challenges in this life, then you are not, you should question your, your God. Big, big challenges should show us that God has a big interest in us. 
we are seeing a, a huge potential in us that he wants to utilize so that he can reach out to his people out there. The challenges that we are going through, see, see how much Joseph went through, you know? Being, uh, let me call it the royal from the siblings. Can we call it the royal? Can we call it the royal? Yeah, from the siblings. They are plotting to kill him just because he's young. It was just a dream, you know? Did he choose to dream? He didn't, right? He just slept like any other of, their, of our, his siblings. Slept and in the morning he woke up with a dream. It wasn't his fault, but he sees the kind of hatred that the siblings are holding against him until they even want to kill him. And uh, see him in Potiphar's house, he didn't do a crime. Imagine, okay, like, have a sister to ask him like, God, where are you? You know, like, how did you allow it for him to go to prison for more than two years for a crime that he didn't commit, you know? I can see, uh, we really need to question God, right? We, could, we should have done something, right? We should have done something, right? How many wrong? I find this very gross. Joseph went to prison for more than two years. Because after he interpreted the, 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 the dreams of the two, the cupbearer and the. the bread. Yeah, after interpreting their dreams, he was there for two more years. But he was remembered and he was called out to go and interpret the, the king's dream, which got him out of. Out of uh, prison and then into his now life purpose. Um, you know, in prison, I don't know what kind of temptations or challenges that you could be going through that can be uh, bigger than being in prison. Did you know that in Angaria, this is in Nakwango, YouTube, people telling about the experience in prison. How is prison? How do you, I don't know, do you have a picture of the prison? Let's say committee here in Kenya. You want to open a, a picture of what you've seen on social media? Of course, not you. Ojaenda uh, but you've seen a, a, an experience somewhere maybe on YouTube. What do you want Imagine yourself in that situation for more than two years for a crime that you did commit. So have we move for a small, uh, a small uh, uh, meeting? See you. Now we are to put up for you my attend. There's something here we need to, 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 we need to square out, right? He has to answer why, why, why God, you know? Why? Uh, it is not easy um, living uh, a life without complaining. It is not easy living a faultless life, especially in this uh, corrupted Generation. I don't know. You need the young and young and corrupted. He generation in the place. How do you find it? Is it the best? Is it the best? It is the worst, right? It is the worst. You, you, you go to sleep and you are like, God, I wish you come at a come overnight and take us home. We are tired of this world, right? And you are expected to live. Elisha's life in this, in this kind of environment, we are expected as the children of God to live a faultless life, blameless life. It is not easy. Let's look, uh, first, first uh, it is not easy, uh, and actually if it were easy, then everybody would do it. See you? Yeah? Yes. If it were easy, then everybody could do it. See you? Because not everybody will be able to, to do it. Um, there is, um, let's, let's have a look at uh, the book of James chapter 4 verse 7. Can you help me with that? James chapter, 7, chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore before the Lord. 
resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you have to do something. It's not something which is going to be easy. But uh, we are going to submit ourselves before God and uh, resist the devil and the devil will flee from us. This is what exactly Joseph did. And uh, uh, he was able to manage to live to go through uh, prison for all those years without complaining. Did he complain? He didn't write. He was able to be, to be betrayed by his brothers, and he, and he was hated by the brothers, but he didn't complain, right? He didn't, eh? And actually, Joseph lived a life that was blameless. So you come out if there is any record of him uh, having a different character than the one that we know. Do we have? We don't. Um, there's beauty in um, in uh, living a life that is that pleases God. Eh? It is important to obey the voice of God. Um, uh, for with it, it comes with blessings and uh, and, and favor from God. Obedience to the voice of God gives a chance to those that wronged us in, uh, in the in the past to reflect in their in the past mistakes and sincerely. Repent. Yeah? Obedience to the voice of God gives our those people that offended us in the past to reflect in their in their mistakes or where they they did wrong and they will sincerely repent if our character will confirm to them that for sure we want to go here. We can see this from uh, the story of Joseph and, and how they came to, to, to reunite with the family, you know. By the time uh, the, the brothers are meeting uh, Joseph in Egypt, they were down to heart. See you? They, they were down to heart. Their character was fully changed. The brothers that, that, that were with uh, Joseph back home, they were cruel, they were, they were how can we how can we how can we describe the brothers that were with Joseph back home? What were we senior? What were hiding back, right? Give me give me describe the, the, them. Describe the brothers. How were they? They were new men, right? They were new men, right? Give me another description of them, the brothers. Eh? They were very selfish. Thank you so much. Uh, but after uh, after they meet with Joseph in Egypt, these people were totally uh, changed. They were completely changed. They were down to heart, right? They respected their dad. They were loving. They were caring, right? At a certain um Joseph and our party are doing a challenge. You know what? Here, I'm not a Are you the same people that I left back home, or you changed really? When he tries to like, and 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 defy your papa, they are spies. They do not really come to buy food food from Egypt, but they come to spy the the the, the nation of Egypt. Do you see how they go down on their knees and bow before Joseph? And then something clicks in Joseph's mind, the dream that he had back home. You see the changed brothers uh, to Joseph uh, when they are meeting in, in Egypt. You see the changed brother uh, when they, they are meeting uh, the, the brothers in uh, Joseph in Egypt. Yeah? yeah, this is the beauty of uh, living a blameless life. Um, a faultless life, life, and also um, a life with less complaints. God knows why we are whatever we are. God has a very good reason as to why He has allowed us to go through whatever uh, challenges, whatever situation that we may find ourselves in. Um, there's a small story about um, some two gentlemen. Uh, these men were they were going back home and they were supposed to take a flight back home. And what you were from airport, they had their tickets ready, and uh, some man came to them and told them, you know, I can save your your money. And uh, these two friends are like, how are you going to do it? 
And um, they, this man, uh, let's call him this man who was a, 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 a plane, who flies a plane. Let's call him the uh, Witten Nagari. To meet the Jonas, eh? Jonas comes to meet the uh, uh, two friends, let's call them John and Peter, and this is Jonas. James, you said James. <laughs> Whatever the name is, James, Jonas, let's call him James. We have James, James, John, we have Peter. So, um, uh, James comes to Peter and John and tells them, I can save your money by uh, 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 offering you a a free flight on uh, my small plane that I, I fly up here. And uh, these people, they're like, yes, we can do that. They send off. Uh, they are like, they send off. 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 Peter, ah, let's call him Peter. The pilot is Peter, and we have John seated next to the pilot, and we have James behind, behind uh, John. So they have uh, just uh, gone up high in the ground, and they are flying off. They are some meters up high, and uh, uh, Peter uh, turns to John. They are, they, are, they are some few meters away from the cloud. And uh, Peter tells John that, uh, you know, we have few minutes, few minutes to the cloud and I can't fly um, uh, a plane in the cloud. They let me pass out. These two people, they were lawyers, and uh, they have only one uh, pilot here. And the pilot is saying that he cannot fly a flight. In the, they are in the sky, they are still flying. There are some few minutes to the Clouds, Nanasema, when Katya came the clouds, they made him pass out. And John was like, you know, those what what is this freaking his mind, you know, it's like, what do you mean? Oh, Jenny, don't you realize that we are up above the ground? You know, how are we going to before I a, a, a confirm uh, maybe I, I repeat the, the exact exact word that we say, the man collapsed. He passed out. This is John and uh, uh, James. They are lawyers, not pilots. Wakouko Ju and in a plane, and the pilot has passed out. Yeah. Then you to buy your own house. You have to So how are they going to make it? You know. The next thing is that these people they are going to be no more in the next one or two, three minutes. You know, the, 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 the plane will come down and crash, and that will be the end of them. So, John in front here sees a, a, a radio call and gets a microphone and gives it back to his friend uh, James and tells him, Please ask for help. You know, in a plane, there is a plane etiquette. Food. They don't, they have no clue about them. They're just like, hello, 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 hello. And uh, a voice is heard from the other end. And uh, this person is like, yes, uh, who are you? And don't you know in, um, in radio etiquette? And I'm like, no, we don't know. We are in a plane with a passed out pilot. We are seeking for help. And this person was kind enough. He told them, hold on, I'm going to get you an emergency anchorage who's going to help you get home safely. In a few minutes, he got them, uh, an anchorage who, uh, who responded back to them and called them, hello, are you there? They were like, yeah, we are here. We, we need your help. And the other person was like, hold on, we have your case. You know, we know that you are in the air with a passed out pilot and you need help. But we have a deal. Our work here is to help you get home safe. Our work here is to help you do what? Get home safe. But there's a condition. There's a deal. You have to listen to my voice. You have to listen and obey 
by boys. Because what option did they have? They only have a radio call. They don't know how to fly the plane. And they're already up here, right? Yeah, did they, did they have another option? The only option they had was to listen to the voice from the other side. And these people were like, we are ready to listen to your voice because we do not have any other option. I don't know if there's a time in your life that you, you get somewhere that you feel like, I don't know, I don't know. Personally, I have found myself in situations like that where you feel like you don't know what next from here. Did you come and go back here? Do you find yourself in a situation that you feel like, I, I, I don't know, I think it is the end. And this is a time that we need to listen to the, to the voice. To the voice, and the voice is the word of God. And the word, and the word in the beginning there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. You have to listen to my voice. The voice from the other phone, from the other side, told them that you have to listen to my voice. And for sure, these people, they were ready to listen to your voice. Uh, he promised to clear the, the traffic and also try to drive them home, which he did. And uh, as they were somewhere near to where they were to get an emergency landing place, uh, the voice from the other side told them that, of course it was at night, and he told them, as you come down, you will see light, and the light will be in the form of a cross. Once you see the light in the form of a cross, know that that is the way, that is the way home. You are almost there. Focus on my voice. Focus on the light at the cross. And for sure you will get home. As these people were trying to uh, uh, get directions, from the emergency anchorage. The emergency anchorage warned them of one more thing, that you are some few minutes from a rock. Few minutes from a rock. And uh, you only need to listen to what? Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Don't look at the storm, don't look at the clouds, and don't look, don't focus on the, on the rock that is ahead of you. Just listen to my voice. I know in this life we have um, a number of clouds, a number of voices in our heads that are advising us in many ways, you know. You can't do it, you are not good enough, you know. I'll give up, you know. I don't know. I don't know what kind of rock that is ahead of you. I don't know how soon is it coming. How soon are you getting to the next rock that is ahead of you? But thank God we have the voice of the Lord that is calling us that we may focus and only listen and obey His voice. That is our God's voice, and He will get us home. Listen and, uh, and obey to God's voice, whatever that you're going through. I know we are human. We are human. And in this world, this is the, 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 the worst world that we are living in, that, our, that, that the world that our ancestors live in. We go through hell. We go through so many things in this life. Sorry that we cannot tell it, but thank God we have a God that we can tell everything that we are going through. We advise this afternoon that don't, don't look at the, the clouds. Don't look at the storms. There is a, a, a rock ahead of you. I don't know how soon, uh, how soon. I don't know how soon are you getting to, to the rock. But if we we focus on the, on, the, on the voice of the Lord. If we obey the voice of the Lord, we are going to get home safely, right? We are going to get home safely. 
if we focus at the cross, the way home is at the cross. If we focus at the cross, we are going to get there. So we read for me John 10, 27. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. I don't know if you have such kind of sheep here. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. There's one thing I need to point out from the story of, uh, of uh, uh, Joseph before I sit down. Uh, I don't remember in the Bible where, where Joseph went to stand in the court to pray. Did he hear? Kuna mahali Joseph alienda kusimama the court to pray, to 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 preach. I don't I don't remember. But his character, his way of life, in your way ya mahali kubiri, in your way ya mahali kubiri. Do you remember the words of um, of um, uh, Pharaoh after he interpreted his dream? Eh? And the same as where can we find such a man? In him, the spirit of God does what? In him, the spirit of God does what? Yeah. Oh God, yeah, this, uh, this afternoon is looking for just one man and one from the Delphima University. The world out there is looking for just that one person in whom the Spirit of God does what? Dwells. Even as we go about our ups and downs in our, in our, in our daily activities, let us remember to be uh, representatives of God. Let us remember to to carry that character of Jesus Christ. That wherever you are, God has placed you, placed you for the associates, those who are working somewhere, wherever you are working, may your employee, may your employer, sorry, may your employer be asking like, where do I find such a, a, another man, another person like this one, in whom the Spirit of God does what? Dwells. In your class, may your lecturers be thinking like, where do we find another person, another girl, another gentleman like him, like her, in who? In who? Thank you so much. Um, uh, maybe I need the choristers to help me do song number five. Song number 96, that is the end of my presentation.
Thank you. 